So right off the bat, before we get started, I mentioned in the last video that I had something else kind of big coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you what it is. I have started another channel with my pastor. His name is Craig Lindley. The channel is called Next Level Revelation. Besides being a pastor, Craig also does motivational speaking. And so he had came to me a month or so ago and he was interested in doing a YouTube channel on him and just following these things he does because he travels to schools, to businesses, to all sorts of places to do motivational speaking. And now then we'll probably cover some church stuff too because I think once you listen to him, you'll understand why I'm excited about this. Craig is a great speaker. He's very animated. And just to give you a little background on him, look up the Power Team on YouTube. Craig was a one of the founding members, one of the first members of the Power Team. These guys would go around to schools and they would, I mean, roll frying pans up with their hands and breaking baseball bats and busting bricks, bending stuff that you shouldn't be able to bend. These guys are huge. Most of them are ex pro football players but they do some amazing feats of strength in these things and it really draws people in and gets your attention and then they get to start talking and telling you what that relates to and why they're able to do that. So that's the next big thing that I'm doing is I'm continuing this channel, don't get me wrong, I'm still always gonna do this, but this other one is gonna be fun too and we're just gonna follow his journey and see how this motivational speaking goes. So go check out Next Level Revelation, I'll leave a link uh, probably right up here or up here somewhere. I'll leave a deal so you can go check that channel out. Click up and subscribe. He's doing great things with this. His goal is to get this channel monetized so he can start making it where it is free for him to do this for schools. Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today what I'm going to talk about is the CNC machine. I've been getting blasted with questions. I mean, they've, I mean, and which I'm grateful for. I, I've got a ton of people asking about the the build. They've watched a ton of the videos, and they're just needing more information. So, like the title says, this is kind of going to be a CNC build reboot. For the most part. So the other thing I'll talk about is pricing of the things I make. I get a ton of questions about how do I figure the price? How do I coming up with these numbers? So we're going to start off with that. Uh, for the most part, I, I did the research and professional CNC places that do this kind of work charge about $120 to $130 an hour of machine runtime which, wow, through the roof, because there are things I cut that just the machine runtime alone takes uh, two hours. Well, so I'm going to be charging these people $260. Some of the stuff, I mean, yeah, it's going to be worth that. It's, you're going to have to, it's what you're going to charge, but just the majority of my things are not that in depth. I mean, I don't have that much labor into them. Now, I do also add, I say that, $80 an hour is what I charge, simply because I'm, I'm not a professional. I mean, this is basically started as a hobby. And now that I've got going on YouTube, I sell quite a bit of things, quite a few things, but I do $80 plus 20% for the finishing. Because, you know, all the sanding and the airbrushing and the staining and the polyurethane, all that stuff takes a lot of time. So I figure the 20% on top of it. So to answer a lot of people's questions, on average, what am I charging for things? I would say on average, most of the stuff I sell is about $50 or $60. I mean, a lot of it takes less than 30 minutes to cut. Uh, I, I, I honestly spend a ton more time doing the painting, staining, polyurethane, all the finish work, the sanding. I spend probably twice as much time doing that stuff as the machine actually doing the cutting. 
which is the cool part to do, but I mean, well, and you got to figure in the programming. I, I spend some things, I spend two hours programming. Some things, I spend 15 minutes programming. So that's how I come up with the pricing on this stuff. I just put the numbers to it. I will program something, the machine will figure out, or the program will figure out how long it's going to take approximately for the machine to cut it. So I take that number and whatever that is, say it's an hour just for ease of figuring. So that's 80 bucks right there off the top. And then I add 20% to that 80 bucks. So that's what the price of that would be. On average, like I say, most of my stuff takes less than 30 minutes to cut. And I add 20% to the $40 and that's where I end up. So it's not a hard process. So I mean, what would that be? $48? For, for a $40 piece. I mean, it's not a, it's not rocket science by any means, but it's the best way I found to price stuff fairly. And that's where that comes from. So the next thing I want to talk about, uh, I, the questions I get asked the most are measurements, how I built a steel frame, uh, size of my parts that I've got on here. So that's basically what I'm going to go over this time is just the real basics. And I'm probably going to end up doing a couple more videos and getting more in depth of how things are done on it. So the first thing I get asked about is linear rails and ball screws. So right here is the linear rail. This is a supported linear rail. You can see right here it has aluminum coming up to the rail itself. The rail is three quarters an inch. It is four foot long. The ball screw, which is right here, this thing sits here and spins inside this little box right here it has ball bearings that spin around these threads and so it's a smooth travel and you don't get any skipping anything like that this is five eighths of an inch thick or diameter and it's five foot long so next we're going to talk about frame from the floor to the top is four foot let me say it again, from the floor to the top of my post are four foot. In between this post and that post, it is 49 inches from here to here. So I'll talk to you about the, the top or the box that I built for this. So it is a two by four frame with 30 quarter inch plywood on top with three quarter inch MDF made in six inch slats. The six inch slats were put there so I could put the railing that my little clamps slide in up and down. And honestly, I did it this way because if you cut into one of these pieces of MDF, I can change a six inch wide by 48 inch long piece pretty inexpensively. So when I say that I, I built this so this box, you can see it slides in here and it's that way on both sides. So I'm 49 inches from inside to inside of this post. Well, you're saying, well, that's wider than four foot. It is wider than four foot inside. It is also 55 inches from outside to outside of that post. It is also the same with this. It's 55 inches from here to here, outside to outside. So my box, my top is actually 48 inches wide, 55 inches long. My reasoning there was if I had it a little bigger, I could cheat and maybe put stuff on my top that I use a lot like this little box of goodies. Paintbrush to kind of clean stuff pliers, bits. I mean, I've got everything I could need in here when I had a project going and I didn't have to run around the shop for it. So, I mean, there, that's the basic measurements of the post and the cross members. Now then, when I say the cross members, I'm talking about the pieces of steel that run between here, which are obviously 49 inches long, so I can accommodate for the box. I do have four of those in there. jack this up a little bit you can see that there is cross members there 
There's one at the very front, one there, and one there, and then there's one at the other end. And so that's probably overkill because all of the cross members, I think it's 11 gauge if I remember correctly. That's been a while since I've done it. It's 11 gauge three by one and a half rectangular tubing, which is very strong tubing. And I did everything out of the stronger steel, the thicker steel. I just didn't want this thing coming apart or moving much. The downside is by building a frame that heavy, I've estimated this thing weighs between six and 800 pounds. So when I built it, I wasn't thinking about moving it, obviously. So right along from that, from here to my upper rail, this upper rail is the same kind of steel. It is obviously 55 inches long because it went from this end all the way to this end of this rail. So the distance inside to inside, you can see is one foot from there to there. So outside to outside is obviously gonna be 15 inches. So it's one foot from the bottom of the top rail to the top of the bottom rail. And it's obviously 15 inches from the very bottom to the very top. So, so I've had other comments about my welding. And I understand, you can see it's all bubble gummed up right there. Get down here close to it. It's all kind of bubble gummy and I've done some grinding. But the reason is, is because I went through and tack welded everything together with a MIG welder and just put little dots just so it would hold, which is that right there. There's my MIG welder. Then I came back in with a stick welder and went right over the top of it. The reason I did the tacks is so, if you go in with a stick welder and you put that much heat to it, it'll warp the metal a little bit. And so over trying to make something square, like a CNC machine, where it needs to be as close as possible to square so everything cuts nicely, by tacking it and putting a little heat to it and then coming over it with a bead, it was already held in place. It wasn't gonna expand or contract much. So guys, like I said, that, that was basically the frame build, the, the top that I put on there, which that is not that big of a construction issue building the top, but the frame is a big deal. Just be sure you're square, be sure everything's nice and perpendicular, as close as possible. And I've, I say close as possible. I looked for them while ago. I've got some calipers around here that I actually used. That's how close my stuff is because I, I wanted it to be perfect. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. So if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe and I'll see you all next time.